Let's test this. Okay, so that was a bit of an aggressive intro. So let's just chill things out a little bit. Get it? Because they're cold. Chill. Ah. My name's Mitch, and this is the Paragon by Nucleus. I recently did a review on the Nucleus Compass, which I did recommend for most situations. If you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it at the end of this one so you can watch it. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a little while, you'll know that I'm not afraid of telling you when I don't like a product. Now this one, I'm still not 100% sure about. So sit tight and I'll let you guys maybe decide for me. So before I get into my experience with this product, I do need to get into a couple of nerdy things. And also I'd like to ask if you could please hit the like and subscribe button, which is gonna help the YouTube gods put me into the algorithm, therefore making it easier to make more of these videos. Now the Paragon was created in collaboration yes, I'm reading this, with the Zurich University of Applied Science after researching the effect of temperature on volatile aroma compounds preservation and the resulting sensory flavoured outcomes in coffee. So my translation of that is making the coffee taste the way it smells using temperature, I think. Now to avoid tongue twisters, I'm going to refer to volatile aromatic compounds as VACs for short. Yes, I'm going to do the Aussie thing and abbreviate everything possible. Now, Nucleus have made some pretty ballsy claims saying that you can retain up to 40% of your vax by using the chilled ball technique. So I will let you know, I have used this a lot over the last couple of weeks because I really wanted to dive deep into how to use it, when to use it and when not to use it. But we'll touch base on all of that very shortly. So before we go through my thoughts, of course, Let's show you how to use it. For filter, assemble the device so that it replicates something from Jesse and Walt's RV meth lab. Place the filter in a dripper of your choice, assuming you can find one that fits. I've actually had to modify this Hario so that it will fit over the gaps. Let me show you one that doesn't fit. So this is a Cafex ceramic. Uh, pretty much if you have any kind of lip underneath, it's not gonna fit very well because, well, yeah. Less than ideal, that is not going to be able to brew a coffee and you're probably going to break something, so don't do that. Now to make sure you get a nice even extraction, you do need to make sure that you place the dripper and the filter central to the ball and as close as possible. Now this is where things get interesting because apparently you only want to extract the first 20 to 30% of the vax. And I have tested this and I will agree with it in most circumstances. Because in my opinion, when you use the ball for the entire extraction, you reduce the heat far too much for it to be an enjoyable beverage. And sometimes, yes, sometimes you can retain far too many of the bad flavors. But again, we'll touch base on all of this shortly. So brew your coffee however James Hoffman has told you to do it this week. Then once you're at about 30% of your brew, slide the chilled ball out of the way and then continue to make your coffee. I'm gonna make one because I want a coffee. Now the results, well, sit tight because it's not as simple as you would think. Now for espresso, there is a specific device on the way that's going to be released very, very shortly. But for now you can use this, it does work. Simply place the chilled ball inside the holder with the holes in it, like so. Pop that on top of your espresso cup and then make your coffee as per normal. Now of course, I'll make a coffee just for you guys. So it obviously looks very nice making an espresso using the chilled ball. Now I do need to point out there's a couple of things that are going to make this much better. It is things like a bottomless porter filter and ensuring that it is central to the basket to make sure you get that even extraction. So obviously without making a bit of a mess, it's gonna be pretty hard to remove the ball at the 30% mark. It's not impossible and also it's probably not super necessary. Uh, I have done it just for taste preferences to see what it does and it doesn't really change the taste that much. The only downside I have found is that it was a little bit too cold for my preference. So now we know how to use it, but the issue I have come across is more so when we should use it. I first had a demo of this device at Mice 22 by Gus McKenzie, the creator of the Nucleus Compass, 
and all-round top bloke. Gus was brewing with and without the device to demonstrate the difference. And yes, there was a difference. Now, my only issue with this device I've found so far is that, well, there is a difference, but it's not a measurable difference. So how do we know when to use it and when not to use it? So I'm gonna pause for a second to help you understand my quirk with this product. We spend a lot of time, money, and effort removing variables, which is something I talk about a lot on this channel. And then we introduce a product like this, which actually introduces unmeasurable variables, which kind of makes it very, very difficult to enjoy this product. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad product. We just need to select when we do and don't use it because sometimes it enhances amazing flavors. Sometimes that brings out the worst in a coffee, which makes it very tricky. So this is not a tool that you can use to bring out sweetness, acidity, or any kind of specific flavor profile. And sometimes it does help to use the ball for the whole extraction, sometimes. Now, maybe you could just adjust your recipe to suit, or you can just remove the variable that's causing the issue in the first place. Now, I could go on all day about when this works, when it doesn't work, some of the recipes I've used to get it to work, but I think the best thing that I can suggest is for you to use it yourself see what you think and let me know your results because my opinion on flavor is not necessarily what is a good coffee. It's up to you to decide for yourself. Because for some of the coffees I use this with made it incredible. Other coffees it made it almost undrinkable, especially with a filter coffee. Now with espresso, this wasn't caused so much. I actually found it was pretty much guaranteed to remove that sharpness from the coffee. So if you're trying to get into espresso or trying to introduce espresso to friends and family, it's actually a really good technique. However, you can just replicate this by using a little bit of ice in an espresso cup or chilling the cup to start. So should you buy this? Yes, I think that everybody should own this. Now, whether it's just for something that you wanna be able to pull your extractions a little bit different with to change the coffee, I have also found it has been helpful to extract flavors from coffees that I haven't been able to crack. Getting some good coffee out of something that really wasn't too good to start with is pretty impressive, and that's where it can be really helpful. And in the worst case scenario, kind of like a Lama Zocco Mini, at least you'll have a really good looking but useless conversation piece on your brew bar. Thanks so much for watching guys, have yourselves a great day, and happy brewing. <laughs>